Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us today in the Breckenridge County Industrial Park. Uh, it is my great joy to welcome you all to celebrate the groundbreaking for the global head. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> Let me back up my hair. The global headquarters for Atlas Machine and Supplies Field Machine Division. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Meredith Debris. I'm the Executive Director of Breckenridge County United Economic Development. Uh, I've been able to work closely with Atlas and specifically members of the Field Machine Division over the last several years on this project, and it's been such a gift to be a small part of this process. Um, I feel like the talent and creativity and the ambition that the Field Machine team shows represents the very best of what we have to offer here in Breckenridge County. Um, this division is proof of the quality of our rural workforce, it's proof of the quality education that you can receive in our wonderful school system, and because of the work that you all have done, uh, you all the original members of the Field Machine Division, and the example that you've set, today we get to celebrate the creation of approximately 78 new jobs in our community. That is 78 kids from here in Breck County that will have access to a well-paying job close to home. And seven, it's a new means of support for 78 local families. And for all of those people and families that are gonna benefit uh, from those jobs, I am grateful for today beyond measure. Uh, it's taken so many people and so many hands to make this possible. I wanna very briefly thank a few people, uh, hopefully before we have any changes in the weather. Um, I'd like to first recognize our state representative, uh, Mr. Josh Calloway, who I've, is Josh here? If he's here, and uh, our Senator Stephen Meredith, who I know is here. Uh, thank you for being here and for supporting economic development in Breckenridge County, um, as well as our um, past uh, state representative, Dean Shamore, who helped kind of kick this project off. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our local elected officials, um, Mayor Macy, all of the Hardinsburg City Council and your staff, um, Judge Lucas, and ooh, don't blow that over either, um, and all of your staff and all of our magistrates. Um, without your financial support of the last couple of years, we wouldn't have been able to, to pull this off. And when we came to you all and said, you know, we need to invest in infrastructure in our community, you made it happen. So thank you all for your willingness to do that. Um, thank you to the Breckenridge County Industrial Authority and Development Corporation and uh, the folks involved with those organizations. Um, you all in investing in this property laid the foundation that the rest of us were able to come and build this on. Um, thank you for the, to the Cabinet for Economic Development uh, who's joined us here today. Uh, they are incredible supporters to us local economic developers and uh, we're, we cannot express how grateful we are for your help. <laughs> and I would like to thank my board directors at Breck United. Um, they are all volunteers and give a lot of their time and energy to help with this. And thank you all for, for sticking with, with this program even when things were really challenging sometimes. Um, and finally, before I uh, uh, move on and let you all hear from the more important people, I would like to thank uh, all the Atlas team, but um, especially the Gimmel family. Um, we wanted Atlas to be here because we have seen the kind of people that you are and the way that you treat your staff and the way that you've invested in our community and our school system. And that showed us that you're the exact kind of employer that that we want to be here. And so we are just uh, really thankful that you all were willing to make this increased partnership with us in our community. So thank you all. Um, and now I would like to ask Father Tony Jones from St. Romuald Church to come up and lead us in a blessing over this site and our proceedings today. As we gather here today, let us recall God's hand in this beautiful day and this beautiful work. In his own life, Christ Jesus clearly showed us the dignity of labor. When he became incarnate, the word of the Father, who was known as the carpenter's son, and willingly worked with the tools of his trade. By working with his own hands, he transformed toil from being an inherent curse for sin into a source of blessing. If we do our work well, whatever it may be, and offer it to God, we purify ourselves and through the labor of our hands and minds, we build up God's creation. Our work enables us to practice charity and to help, help the less fortunate, so that joined to Christ the Redeemer, we grow in his love. 
Let us bless the Lord then and pray that he will shower his blessings on all who will work in this place. And let us pray. O God, by working as a carpenter, your son enhanced the dignity of human labor and to a wonderful way joined us through our own toil to the work of redemption. Through the blessing they seek, strengthen your faithful. Give to those who are employed in skillfully transform, transforming the things you have created a sense of their own dignity. Make them content in their dedication to bettering the human family in praise of your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may God, the Father of goodness, who commanded us to help one another as sisters and brothers, bless this new building with his presence and look kindly on all who enter here. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, to give remarks, I would like to introduce Mr. Richie Gimmel, who's the fourth generation president of Atlas Machine School. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you, Father. Some of you Atlas guys, do me a favor, come on in and sit down. She took the trouble to put these chairs out for you. You're making it weird. Thank you. Um, well, welcome everybody to this groundbreaking ceremony today. Um, this is a day that I have been dreaming about for at least 10 years. Um, and it's a bit surreal to see it become a reality. Um, just really, really uh, humbled to see all the interest in what we're doing here and, and very grateful. Um, I'm imagining that a lot of you guys probably know about Atlas and, and our business, but um, what we are, we're, we're an old family business, yes, uh, founded in 1907. Um, and what we do fundamentally is we support manufacturers. We help them keep their plants running so that they can make the products that uh, they make for their customers in our community. And so we work to support all types of industries, everything from rock crushing to automotive manufacturing and their myriad of supply chain that has to be supported, as well as the steel industry, aluminum industry, and many, many others. So dad used to always say that there's a little bit of Atlas and everything from toothpaste to Toyotas, and um, there's, that's, that's actually true. Um, we have had a long history um, with the state of Kentucky as a partner um, with them going back to our onset in 1907. Uh, we have eight locations now throughout multiple states in the Midwest, Tennessee, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, but we are a Kentucky business. Um, we've always been a Kentucky business. And um, I, can't, I can't imagine that changing. Uh, it's been just such a great partnership for 115 years now. Um, we've also had a newer, but also very important partnership with Breckenridge County here in Kentucky. I think this partnership probably started to really kind of take root 20 years ago or so. Um, we developed a relationship with the Area Technology Center at the time, and um, it has proven to be just a huge blessing for our company and a fundamental building block that has helped us get to the point that we're at today as an organization. Um, I'm very excited to further deepen that partnership. We just frankly cannot do what we do and grow like we want to grow as a business without what that tech center does. Um, so very thankful for the people that make that possible and extremely thankful for that partnership. Um, something that grew out of that for us was the development of what we see here today is um, our field machining division. We had always kind of dabbled in this sort of uh, sector within our business and made a commitment to really dive into it about uh, really five years ago when we opened the facility uh, not far from here in Harned. Um, you know, we, we maybe had three people at the time. We quickly grew that into a, a crew of 10 or so. And um, 
I expected when we leased that facility that it would be a great home for us for many years to come. But such is the talent and um, work ethic of the folks that we're able to find here, that business has taken off. Um, we have quickly become a market leader and a preferred vendor for the people that need that type of service. And uh, we've quickly outgrown that facility. Um, this investment here will give us a platform to grow for the foreseeable future. Um, we're planning on building roughly a 30,000 square foot facility initially. Uh, we've bought 10 acres. Um, we don't need nearly that much space to build that facility. And I think you'll see that this will be um, a partnership that continues to deepen and grow through further investment, Lord willing, in the years to come. Um, you can imagine being a business that's been around for 115 years. We've dealt with our um, fair share of challenges. The uh, pandemic in 2020 was actually the second pandemic that we've been through. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, I, I, let's stop there. Yeah, I, I couldn't find a, a lot of notes on on how we handled the first one, so we just kind of winged it. But um, you know, that was a challenge. We've got we've got opportunities and challenges now, um, and and businesses are faced with tough decisions about investment with. The cost of capital increasing through rises, yeah. rising interest rates. Yeah. Um, I mean, that directly affects our ability to work with banks to fund projects like this. Um, and we have made a lot of tough decisions in the last few years, but I have to say that this was a very easy decision. Every decision that we've made based on a level of partnership with this county has just turned to gold for us. Um, the people are great. They have such hard work ethic. Um, they, they're talented. Um, I can't thank both the Kentucky Economic Development Cabinet and Breck United, the Economic Development Group here in the county, for all of their support. They, they took um, what was a straightforward decision for us and made it an absolute no-brainer with uh, the support that they've given us in making this happen. So, like I said, we made a lot of hard decisions over the years and, and you wrestle with things. This was something that, um, you know, even with the, the rising interest rates and the, I think, somewhat, you know, uncertainty, level of uncertainty regarding the economic climate going forward, it's just a no brainer. It's an easy decision to make and I'm, I'm excited to do it. Thank you guys so much for coming out here to celebrate with us again today. And um, just really, again, humbled and grateful. Those are the words for me today. Um, special day for me and for Atlas. And um, we'll do our best to continue to be an employer that, that does right by the people that, that do their best for us every day. Thank you. Thank you. Now to say a few words on behalf of Breckenridge County, we have our Judge Executive, Morris Lucas. Good morning. Good morning. Now, Meredith made me promise to make this very, very short. <laughs> and and uh, you know I like to talk, as you know that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I have a few remarks I would like to make. But first off, Governor, I'm, I'm so glad to see you tickled death to have you here and we're hoping we could do this again maybe in the near yeah, future yeah. on another groundbreaking and so forth so uh, and the the, the Gimmel family uh, I think there's no words that we can say really to express our uh, sincere gratitude for the confidence that you all have placed in our county and especially our workers that the uh, vocation I still call it the vocational school but uh, <laughs> that the vocational school they turn out a skilled as Richie mentioned a very skilled and qualified labor force and that that's the reason we're standing here today is the relationship that we had with the Atlas machine over the years and thank you all for for what you all are doing the confidence that you've uh, placed in Breckenridge County uh, we are going to be out to the vocational school very soon and we, I think we'll get a tour of, of, of it as well too so uh, it, it's a great great thing for our county this is a wonderful day for Breckenridge County. We thank you all so much for the investment you're making. Uh, if there's anything that you all need, holler, and me and the managers will try to take care of it. Thank all you. Right. Thank you.
Thank you, Judge, very much. Okay, and now it is my great honor to ask you all to join me in welcoming um, our governor of our wonderful Commonwealth of Kentucky, Mr. Andy Bashir. What an exciting day. Uh, Rocky and I are thrilled uh, to be here and to join you along with members of the Economic Development Cabinet to celebrate an incredible groundbreaking. Today, we are celebrating the expansion of Atlas Machine and Supplies operations here in Breckenridge County. And how proud are we that a company this big that operates in so many states and so many places calls Kentucky their home. And I know today is not just a milestone for Hardinsburg, but for all of Breckenridge County and the surrounding region. You know, I recently recognized October as Manufacturing Month in the Commonwealth to highlight our manufacturing sector that now employs nearly a quarter of a million Kentuckians across 5,000 operations. What that means is Atlas has a whole lot of clients across Kentucky and I know across the United States. And today we see that momentum continuing to increase. Atlas has a long and rich history in our Commonwealth dating back to the early 1900s. And uh, Richie, congratulations. I understand a little something about family business. <laughs> and I know today how proud multiple generations are of you and of this investment. Let's get it up for this family investing right here. You know, he mentioned a, a couple of the challenges that they faced. I also didn't have notes from the Spanish flu. <laughs> but you look at this company operating through the Great Depression. Uh, their home was Louisville, the great Louisville flood in the 1930s. And despite everything that was thrown at them, the company has not just survived, it has thrived over the decades. Manufacturers from across the United States and beyond rely on Atlas to keep their plants running. Today, we get to help Atlas Machine and Supply break ground on this new 32,000 square foot facility here in Hardinsburg. This new facility, and I know it's been mentioned, but you're getting a worldwide headquarters right here in Breckenridge County. This will be that new headquarters for the Field Machining Division. And if I read right, they're the number one company in the world at what's going to be done from right here in Breckenridge County. I got that right, didn't I? That's right. It's got to be true. This project comes in response to increase demand for this company's services, which is a good thing for the Commonwealth and a good thing for the country. This new larger facility will help the company reach its full potential by improving efficiency and flexibility, helping Atlas attract and retain talent and providing space for continued growth right here in the Commonwealth. The facility will be located on 10 acres in the Breckenridge County Industrial Park and it's gonna replace a smaller location. Now you never like it when a company leaves a location, but when they've outgrown it and they choose to remain in your county, it's still a pretty good day. And I'm guessing if they want to expand in the future, that building's still there. I understand that also what this means to this community. And it isn't every day that a rural community has a $3.47 million investment that's going to create an additional 78 new jobs for this county and the surrounding area. With the already existing 20 jobs, this county is going to be home to an employer that's going to have about 100 folks working for them on any given day. But Judge, you got my word, this isn't going to be our only groundbreaking. Because an investment like this from a company this sophisticated sends a message loud and clear to companies across the Commonwealth and across the world that if you're looking for a workforce that's not only one of the best, but when you invest here, they give you their word that they will get the job done, that's going to attract more and more. And what we're seeing is employers wanting to move to a place where they have the community, the county, and the region's full attention. 
The investment we're here today to celebrate also grew out of a relationship, as it's been said, between Atlas and the Breckenridge County Area Technology Center. That is an incredible center that is going to be a magnet for new companies and new opportunities. And let me tell you that Atlas and the Breckenridge County Area Technology Center are ahead of their time because the future of our workforce is direct connections between the private sector and training facility superintendent like you built where they can see where their workforce is being trained and even track them several years out. What you've done here, you're going to see replicated all across the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and y'all can tell them that Atlas and Breckenridge County did it first. Yeah. <laughs> and to think the number of students that are going to come from that technology center to here are only a portion of the students that have been trained since 2017, where they provided over 400 of our young people with the skills, the ability, Father, to have that dignity of work, to do it well. And we need a lot more carpenters right now, too. <laughs> Atlas and the Breckenridge County Area Technology Center are moving us closer to, I think, the goal, but maybe even the dream, that every parent and grandparent across Kentucky share because we all have one in common. That's that our kids are our grandkids. We'll never have to leave this state or the region they're from if they don't want to because we make sure every opportunity is available for them. That's not something that's right or left or blue or red. That is a common vision we all share because in addition to the dignity of work, what it does is allow us to leave our kids a little better off than we had it, which is, I think, one of our callings in life. Atlas's project is crucial for this county, but for the region and the entire Commonwealth. It is a great sign of what is going on right now, and I think what's going to help us get through any challenges that the coming days or weeks can bring. And this announcement was a part of a two-year period of economic development we should all be proud of. Woo! Hey. I'm that excited, too. Because when you look at the challenges we face, the pandemic being in full swing last year, in 2021, we didn't just break, we shattered every economic development record in the books. On an average year, we bring in $5.5 billion in new private sector investment in Kentucky. Last year was $11.2 billion of new investment. On a good year, we bring in about 7,500, maybe 9,000 new jobs. Last year was a record 18,000 new jobs, and already in 2022, I can tell you we're going to have our second best year ever. Because just at the end of September, we we're already over $7.5 billion with much of our investment coming in the fourth quarter. And we've already announced 13,000 new jobs this year alone. And in this Lincoln Trail Area Development District, whew, I know today's a good day, but the Area Development District has been knocking it out of the park. Over the last two years, 50 Private sector investments, over $7 billion of new investment. That's creating 6,000 new jobs. And so let's give a big shout out to the district's new executive director, Daniel London. Where are you today, Daniel? I thought we were going to have Daniel. Let's clap for him anyway. All he's got to do next year is beat $7 billion. Uh, as well as, do we have Mike Burris, who is our former? Okay, well, he's done a really good job. He's going out on top. And since we made that investment, please know that we're going to continue to invest in the infrastructure that's necessary to make days like today and other projects happen. Uh, thanks to the General Assembly. Uh, Senator, thank you for your bipartisan work. $750,000 of grant money has come from our Cleaner Water Program to ensure that everybody has that basic human right of clean drinking water. More than $300,000 have, uh, have come into the county from the Energy and Environment Cabinet. And more than $170,000 now helping out those that have been harmed in this county through the Violence Against Women Act. But I didn't come here today empty-handed. Because if we're going to create 78 new jobs and you all are going to invest, I want you to see that we're investing in this community to help it grow as well. So today, we have three separate investments for groups that are joining us. First, through our Cleaner Water Program today, 
we're awarding more than $1.3 million to the city of Hardensburg. Those dollars are going to extend water lines to 150 households that don't have service. That's 150 households that are now going to be able to turn on the tap and know they have clean, reliable drinking water. The families right now haul water or use groundwater wells, but they're not going to have to anymore. So today, we're also awarding $433,000 to the city of Irvington to extend water lines for another 28 unserved homes. And And finally, we're awarding another $250,000 to the Breckenridge County from the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet for resurfacing portions of four roads, Old Railroad, Dents Bridge, Old Kirk Axtell, Tulis? Tools. Tools. I still brought the money. And Tools Creek Road. These roads are going to make sure that your employees can get to work safely, can get their children safely to church and to school. We think a whole lot about those big road projects, but our resurfacing is what keeps so many of our families safe. So if I could ask Breckenridge County Judge Executive Maurice Lucas, Hardinsburg Mayor Wayne Macy, Irvington Mayor Yvonne Kennedy, come join us. We've got a bunch of big checks for you. just want to say again, uh, Rocky and I, Economic Development, greatly appreciate having you here today. This was a day made possible, though, by this community and this company. We are glad to be a partner that can help, whether it's in terms of incentives or in terms of infrastructure. But I want you to know that we know that the strides that are taken and that the best ideas come from every local community. So we're going to continue to listen and learn and work with you and make sure that this announcement is one of many. So finally, um, on behalf of the Commonwealth, um, we've got a gift for this company, because if you create 78 new jobs and, <laughs> and you invest several million dollars, we want to make sure you have a gift. So Richie, on behalf of the Commonwealth, please accept this as our token of gratitude. God bless. brought a whole case and passed it around. <laughs> we, we want them to like Brett County now. <laughs> well, thank you all again so much for uh, joining us today. We're getting ready to head over and actually uh, move some dirt, which will be very exciting. Um, but before I step away from the mic, I, I again want to say thank you all and invite you all to join us following the groundbreaking in pictures at the Area Technology Center. Um, like we've pointed out, this is such a critical part of bringing Atlas and other entities to our community, so we want to celebrate that facility today as well, and we will be heading there for uh, refreshments and tours after pictures. Um, so if y'all would like, head that direction, and uh, we're going to break some ground. I, I really want to recognize these three guys particularly. We've got Matt Kennedy on the end, who is, uh, and they're super uncomfortable right now, by the way. Uh, we've got Matt Kennedy there on the end. He runs our field machining division. He's in charge of all the operations. We've got Rano, who uh, worked in it with me, actually, uh, many years ago, and now is our national sales rep for that group. He's responsible for building relationships with our customers and um, making sure that we know what we can, or that they know what we can do for them. And they've got Brandon Heverin, who runs the engineering side of that business. So project management, estimating, making sure the business is uh, operating properly and things are getting where they need to be when they need to be there. So these are the three key guys that have really built this opportunity for Atlas Machine in this community as well. So I wanted to be sure to recognize them today. Uh, they're also a lot better at manual labor than I am. So 
when I saw these shovels, I thought of you guys. So. <laughs> all three good break boys. Yeah, all, all good right. break boys, yeah. too. Yeah. All right. All right. <coughs> What's the technique here? All right. Let's see. So, let's see. Let me get this one out of the way. Yeah, get it in the ground and look up. Yeah. And now lift it halfway and look up. <laughs> and on three, we'll toss it. One, two, three. All right. Yay. We're doing this a lot lately. <laughs> Okay, so here's your classroom. Yep. You're able to use these to start showing for fabrication, yeah. layout, and blueprint reading. Yeah. And then we do cutting processes. And okay. We do all four of the MIG, stick, TIG, uh, do all the different certifications and then co ops. Okay. Uh, so we utilize both. Uh, union opportunities mm -hmm. and non-union, we just get them out in the workforce, yeah. we do all tech, okay. uh, and then a lot of the other local mom and pop welding shops as well. Wonderful. So, so we, we kind of give them opportunities we, for we, a pretty we need a lot. Yeah, and we just started a new track program, okay. uh, which is with the union industries to yeah. uh, help get them out there and have a line when they graduate so they can have a free apprenticeship. Sure. To get them into uh, uh, have quick hundreds quick. of welders on uh, uh, projects yeah. on 65 yeah. so far. Yeah. Yeah. Bridges, the structural, yeah. and, and a lot of different. And I just got back from Africa the week before last, and I got a presentation I'm going to show my welder yeah. classes of how even third world countries uh, utilize welding. And my job's everything. never taken me to Africa. Yeah. <laughs> from 18 students in class to 20. Great. And then we built the uh, cutting tables. Okay. The office fuel system, all that. Yeah. Uh, the design and the fabricated fuel system. Uh -huh. uh, we do the rigging, the bridge deck. Right. We fabricated all the uh, figure out how much low loading speed. Uh -huh. The ground lot is sporting. Sure. And then that saved us uh, roughly three thousand dollars a table. Good practice. Yeah, and we got uh, work-based learning out there. That's outstanding. So Atlas just pretty well brings their curriculum in here to you, and they say, hey, uh, to some degree. Yeah. And then the sheet metal apprenticeship program for mm -hmm. bone makers, the pipe fitters, uh, the iron workers, all of those kind of. And I'm utilizing my bowler maker apprenticeship curriculum is pretty neat that, that I can bring mm -hmm. and then that on is. this one we fabricated uh, where we teach buddy welding yeah. which is like working on a water wall and a boiler where you hand off uh, the window there the two welders can use one welding machine and make high pressure welds mm. so uh, we do all different types of certifications and, and things of that nature outstanding we make parts of the tractors for people in town, repair okay. stuff for people. Uh, good, pra good practice that yeah, helps the community. Yeah, especially with a lot of people we send to Atlas, a lot of what they do is repair work. So yes. we try to, I try to uh, teach on repair work just as much as I do making stuff new. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of shops, that's all they do. And the value is to be able to see what it is, to analyze what you're going to have to do, right? Right, right. Be able to look at it, diagnose the problem fast, and find a point to do that's pretty much the work on here. And, uh, a lot of it's 3D design, 3D yeah. modeling. Um, so how can they plus the machine solve the problem? Yep. Yep. But now we're putting in uh, that whole room over there. It's um, all 3D printing now too. All right. There's so much stuff going to it. Isn't that exciting? That, yeah. So uh, good. And it all kind of translates back back to each other. So. Well, today's announcement I know is in large part because of what y'all do. So yeah, you gotta be pretty proud of that. Yeah, a lot of. A lot of people work at Atlas came through this program, yeah. so, including myself. I went through this program really? too. Yep. So you went through the program, you went to one of the employers, and now you're back teaching. Right. That's pretty I've awesome. actually worked for both employers yeah. at Living Breakers County. I worked for Whitworth Tool and for Atlas Well, thanks so, for what you're doing. Thank you. You help a lot of families. Good for y'all. Y'all are ahead. I mean, this is, this is the future workforce, and y'all are doing it faster than others. And uh, some of the local business do more and all of them come in yeah. and talk just about what they need and Good. what they want and for. That's yeah. also. So they've all been a, a big contributor to what they want us to train in. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and you got to think in this region, I mean, we were talking in the ad district, $7 billion in new investment. Yes. And, yes. and that, that can create a real secure job. 
and, folks. and these folks, these aren't minimum wage jobs. These no. are really good career building jobs. Yeah, they are. And with the and with the announcements we're having, their industries are going to be around the next hundred years. 